jets go by. You know, May is Older Americans Month, and we at AIB salute our older Americans. And no matter what age, it's important to stay fit and flexible. And so now we go to AIB's David Bull, who talks with Dr. Amy Josephson, a yoga instructor, and much more about the value of staying flexible. Dr. Amy, it seems like a simple question, but it's one I really have never had an answer to. Can you explain what yoga means? Yoga is the joining together of the body, mind, and spirit. There's many, many types of yoga. Some are called, some names would be Ashtanga or Iyengar, or there's power, there's Anyasara, there's Bikram, which is in hot. You know, they put it in the heat. So there's so many types. But the really important thing is it's not necessarily as much the type of yoga, but when someone goes to take a yoga class, to find that instructor in that particular kind of yoga that works for them. Now, I've seen people doing yoga, and I'm not really sure I'm in the physical shape to be able to do that. Are there physical limitations? I always like to say everybody's body's different. Um, but I don't believe that anyone can't do yoga. And one of the things I really stress to people is take the T out of the can't and say that you can and just do it. And you do it to the limits of where your body is. And honoring your body is really huge in yoga. You definitely increase strength and flexibility. You're getting your body movement going, so the blood flows through the body. We want to feed all those organs with oxygenated blood. Um, it's really good to learn, you know, as you do yoga, you're going to learn different form and take your body to better levels because you could be the best athlete and you might not be able to do at that time a certain, you know, touching your toes. But not to say I can and to keep coming and work at it and be where you are is what the beauty of yoga is. So it's just like anything else. You stick with it, you progress, you get better at it. Exactly. And that's why we call it a practice. Yoga is a practice. And so is life. It's a practice. Well, how often would you recommend someone practice yoga? Um, someone could do yoga every day. You could do a little bit each day, starting with little movements, starting with maybe vinyasa flows, which are sun salutations and things that you take with your breath in the movement. But, you know, again, it's so hard to, like, I wouldn't just tell someone, go five days a week, go three. You know, it would depend on each person. So it is something that you tailor to your own needs. Absolutely. Tell me, what are some of the misconceptions about yoga? Um, the misconceptions are, and I was even one of those victims who would never walk into a yoga class because I thought all you do is sit there and be. And that at that time of my life was like something I didn't want to do because I was very active. I think that people think they can't touch their toes, so I can't really do yoga. And I'm like, that's exactly why you need to come to yoga so you can learn. And then a lot of people are afraid that they're not fit enough to do it if they know that it is more of a fitness thing. And it's just judging yourself before you try something new. Now, I've, you know, it's channel surfing, come across a yoga program, and it just seems so boring. And you've come <laughs> across a new concept, though. You've developed a game called the Yoga Game. Can you briefly tell me about the Yoga Game? Yes. Actually, the Yoga Game is not just a game. It's also an educational tool. I created this for people to learn yoga poses, the Sanskrit names, the pronunciations, the phonetic pronunciations, and the sun salutations. So people could just take this and learn it for people that are afraid to go into yoga. Or there's a game with a timer and there's cards and you challenge each other with the cards and you see if you could get it right and then you play with the Sanskrit names. And then it's great because they're all color coded, the cards, and they're beautifully art drawn. So children love it. And it's great for families to get together and get some p kids off the internet and doing something active and to take to schools where there's more fitness. People travel, take it with you. You know, there's no gym and do some yoga. And I just think, you know, for me, I wanted to put something together that would make anybody feel safe mm -hmm. to feel comfortable doing yoga. What's the main message you want to get, a, get across about yoga? The main message I want to get across is that I think it changes people's lives. Um, and if you're afraid, go for it, because there's probably a reason why. And if you don't like one class, try another, um, because you never know what's going to fit for you. And it, it will enhance your life physically, mentally, spiritually, and or emotionally. Thank you. You're welcome, David. And to you, I'm going to say namaste. That's how we end all our yoga classes. Namaste. Peace, love, and health.
Oh, I really feel like stretching after listening to that interview David did with Dr. Josephson. Hmm, I'm okay. Oglethorpe University's Museum of Art is currently exhibiting Indian art. It showcases some of the finest artists from the Indian subcontinent, as well as a diversity of faith traditions from that region. Oglethorpe!